soy sauce. So I got one of these a little while back. Um, this is from a modder, goes by the handle Natalie the Nerd. Uh, you can check out her site, natalietheNerd.com. Um, what this is, this is basically a, an LED illumination kit for the Game Boy Color. The idea is you just solder this onto your Game Boy Color and then it makes your buttons light up. Pretty simple. Um, these kits in particular, if you buy one from Natalie, they are a little bit pricey, um, but that is kind of par for the course. These are all hand assembled, um, sold by Natalie, and I believe she sells them to retro modding as well. So if she doesn't have them stocked, retro modding she might. Um, but this is what you get. It's just a simple, nice, thin ribbon. Uh, and I think talking about it, talking about the install, and actually taking apart the console is going to take longer than actually doing the install. So I'm probably going to end up speedrunning that. But it um, comes in a few different variants, a few different colors. Uh, I got the white one because I figured if I wanted different color LEDs, I could just use uh, like different color buttons and then um, refract the light through those that way. Um, you can also get like transparent ones. Those are pocket buttons, but same thing. Um, she also makes them for the other Game Boy models as well, but I have the Game Boy Color one here because at the time that's what she had. But I don't know. Seems neat. Um, there's really not a whole lot to it. It's just LEDs and resistors. Uh, and you do get the power LED there. So your power LED matches all your buttons. If you don't want to use the power LED, if you want to keep your stock red one, or if you've already modded it to a different color, you can literally just snip the ribbon off above this ground pad. Just cut scissors, tear, knife, doesn't matter. Uh, it'll still work all the same. Uh, there's nothing critical that runs through that power LED. And like I said, there's no, it's just LEDs and resistors. There's no circuitry to this. Uh, so there's nothing to disrupt. Uh, it looks like all the LEDs are run in parallel off of the cart bus, so 5 volts. It's pretty simple. Um, but the idea for this thing is you typically install it in like an opaque Game Boy with transparent buttons. And instead of the black membrane, you probably want to use a transparent or a white membrane. Uh, and you should get a pretty decent result with that. Um, so instead of doing that, Let's do this Game Boy with the clear so you can see everything. <laughs> now, I get a lot of people in, in the comments oftentimes. I'm going to ramble while I take this apart. Complain about how bad the light bleed is in clear shells. And you know what? Sure, that's fine. I, I disagree. I think light bleed can look pretty good. But also... There's a reason I use the clear shells to show off this sort of stuff on my channel. Um, so that you guys can see what kind of light bleed there is and decide, hey, am I okay with that? Or should I go with an opaque shell? But I will at least swap out the buttons and the pads. Six screws, off comes the back, pop those out, and then three more screws for the motherboard. I'm fairly certain there is no wiring I need to worry about for my backlight kit in here. I've already totally forgotten. And for those wondering what it is, it's that Cloud Game Store 2.6 inch IPS backlight. I genuinely don't know if I have the video published for that yet, and if the video will even go up before this. Yeah, I don't. Um, but it's there. It's in my queue. We'll get there eventually. Anyway, this just goes like that. Around all the buttons so that we don't have to modifier button inputs. Easy peasy. 
But first, since I am going to be using the LED, I need to remove the stock LED. Easiest way to do that, I'm going to bring that in for some soldering action. Uh, gotta unplug my capture card so I can get my soldering iron. Weird how stuff works out, huh? Anyway, I'm gonna tin both legs so that I know there is plenty of fresh solder on there. I don't really care that it's bridged. In fact, that'll probably make things a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the LED with my fingers. It might be easier to use like pliers or something. Get a grip on it. Yeah. I can't grip it worth a dang. So I'll use the pliers. Grip it with pliers. Melt both legs. Comes right out. And we can reuse it. I probably won't, but I can. Right, just making sure those aren't shorting on each other. We don't need to do anything else. Nice, clean joints. No more power LED. And then we take this. And I don't know if this is an early revision thing because I bought in at the first batch because I like supporting cool mods. Um, but the cart edge does not quite line up with the ground pin. So what we're going to do to work around that the pad is there, the pad is plenty big, it's just the pin that doesn't quite line up. So we're just going to cut the pin off. That way. When I come back here, and solder this down, everything lines up and everything is nice and flat. Line up the buttonholes. I'll fix that god-awful joint in a second. <laughs> that one too, good god. We do not want to short. The importance of flux when it comes to soldering is the difference between those crummy joints and much, much better ones. Good lord, I'm having a day because I am not using flux. There we go. That's what I wanted. And that's it. We're done with the install. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Clean up a little bit because there's some mix. Because, you know, clear shell. Let's try it out. I don't know if I was 
aware of this ahead of time. But these buttons are actually really sweet. These aren't just clear, um, like in the other Game Boy Color I was showing off. These are just clear with the standard pads behind them, but these new ones are kind of pearlescent. I'll, I'll throw a link to the buttons and these pads um, in the description if you guys are curious. But actually, you know what? Let's try it with the stock buttons first. Just see how it looks. I don't expect great, but, you know. We can still look. I'm just going to get my power supply. That seems like the most efficient course. And, ta-da! So, yeah, that ain't I mean, that ain't awful, but obviously that's the opposite effect um, that we want. We, we, don't, we don't want that effect. So let us swap out the membranes and buttons now. it on top of the buttons and you won't be able to find the buttons. There we go. Negativo, positivo, and ta-da. I think that's quite a bit better. Uh, obviously, there's still hot spots from where the LEDs are. Um, maybe more diffusion could help with that, but I don't think it's bad at all. And there's surprisingly little light bleed on a clear console. Interesting how that works out, right? Uh, I guess let's try this, um, let me put this back together just so I can show that it doesn't actually interfere with the button inputs or, or anything like that. Ugh, throwing my light everywhere. I'm trying to get my power supply out of here. I like that the IR window is clear too. That's pretty neat. No idea what I'd use that for. Like what, no idea what practical purposes that serves when 
There's a perfectly usable IR window with the uh, stock shell. But you know how it is. Of course, I'm picking like the worst time to do this video because by the time this goes up, shipping will just be totally shut down for holidays. So, sorry, but you know, it is what it is. I've mentioned this several times before, but I suppose it's always worth mentioning again. Uh, when screwing into plastic, you should always back the screw up a few turns. You hear that click? I'll do it again. Until the screw clicks into place and then thread it in. Otherwise you're setting new threads into plastic and that weakens the plastic. If you're screwing something into metal, as most of us have done before, uh, if you've ever changed a car tire, um, you probably already do that without even thinking about it. You have to do it with metal because re-threading the metal with hand tools is usually not the easiest thing. <laughs> Doable, if you're stubborn enough. Grab a game. What do you say I grab? Whatever the hell this is. It's probably Pokemon Crystal Clear or something. No, just Pokemon Crystal. See, all buttons, no problem. Works a treat. I dig it. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, you know, 40 bucks is a little bit pricey. I think that's what these ran me. I honestly don't remember because I bought them direct from Natalie and it was in Australian dollars, not US dollars. Um, but Retromodding has them listed for like 37 US dollars. So with shipping, it's like a $50 mod. It, um, but I suppose if you're looking at something like this, you know, we we all understand perfectly that this is not a functional mod in that it does not provide additional function to your Game Boy. Uh, it is purely cosmetic, so scoff at the price all you want. You know who you are if you're buying something like this. Um, again, it's just regular white LEDs. There's no color or anything. If I wanted to add color, I could add color filters or use different colored buttons. I really dig the pearl on these. I genuinely didn't notice that these were pearl until now. I thought they were just regular clear. Um, color filters, or you can just get it in whatever color you want if you're doing like a theme build or something. Uh, there are other options, including DIY, and I just had it. Um, for Game Boy Color specifically, Funny Playing did just put this out, and uh, we'll go over that in a little bit too. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's all I got. Um, I, I I don't really have anything else to say. I mean, it, it's it's neat. You guys can see what it is for yourself and and make a decision based off that. 
Uh, because we replaced the LED, we no longer have the low power notification uh, warning, which is um, on the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket. Um, the low power, the, the power LED itself is powered directly off of the battery voltage. So as the batteries get lower, the LED gets dimmer. Um, this, however, is powered by the power regulator, which means the whole time, regardless of the charge of the batteries, the power regulator is putting out a steady 5 volts, which means this LED or any of the other LEDs should not get any dimmer when uh, you use... Uh, when your batteries get low, rather. Um, I'm turned around talking about something else entirely. Let's test... I wanted to test an Easy Flash, but I don't have one handy, so let's test an EverDrive. I am curious if the lights dim while that boots. And they do, yeah. That makes sense. This, These are in parallel with the cart, and the cart is pretty power thirsty, so... Oh, we gotta select down start. So, blink and you miss it. I blinked, I did miss it. But there you go, pretty neat. Anyway, I will go ahead and throw a link in the description, uh, or you can grab one of these if you want. Um, I'll throw a link to a retro modding. That's where uh, Natalie's LED boards are currently. Um, she has them directly on her site as well, but her site's uh, closed down for the holiday, I guess. Um, so I can't really link directly to that if I wanted to. Um, I will also throw a link in the description to Retro Game Repair Shop. They did send me these buttons and the membranes um, specifically because they wanted me to use them with this, but I used them with this. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really dig these uh, buttons and membranes. Uh, the membranes, I believe, are from Cloud Game Store. The buttons, I'm not 100% sure. I will have to double check on that, but I believe they're also from Cloud Game Store. Um, but I like them, at least in a stock shell. The power button itself is very reasonable. I know a lot of aftermarket button sets um, and but and shells have issues with the power switch being too tight, but that's not the case in a stock shell with these buttons at the very least. Um, I don't remember if the problem is the shell or the buttons themselves. Either way, I'm digging it. I like the buttons, I like the membranes, I like the LED board. That's all I got. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.